myself i am manu prasad working as assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering in mbr college of engineering and technology today we will discuss about so types of flame carbon steel so our previous classes we will discuss about our previous classes what is iron and types of cast iron so it is our previous class one so comes to here iron iron and different types of cast iron it is the unit to one it is, it is the second unit in second unit the total topic is you learn about metals what is metal and different types of metals so comes to engineering metals generally classified into three types one first one is metal second one is non metal third one is metalloids one so in metals we have the two types again the first one is ferrous metal second one is non ferrous metals so ferrous metals one uh, what is the ferrous metal means so in ferrous metal without contain iron one so the some example rough iron cast iron steel these are the examples of the ferrous metal so non ferrous metals means uh, we have the without contain iron one without contain iron one so that one we can call as the non ferrous metal one we have the some examples for the non ferrous metals also see here so it is the examples it is the brief introduction about the iron and iron carbon alloys one so see here i i will tell you once again the basics of the metals so see here pure iron is a relatively soft material and it is hard widely used in industrial application tamma so iron is pure iron is a relatively soft material it is mostly widely used in industrial applications only so next one is alloys process wide range of properties alloys process wide range of properties and widely used in industries alloys are wide range of properties it will be produced and widely used in industries so alloy are broadly classified in two types one is ferrous alloy second one is non ferrous alloy also alloys are broadly classified into two types one is ferrous alloy second one is non ferrous alloy comes to the ferrous alloy those are alloys contain iron one so and main constitute so that one we can call as it is a ferrous alloy non ferrous alloy is those which main element is in the non ferrous alloy are those which main element in any material other than iron is called as the non ferrous metal one so steel comes to the, our topic one comes to our topic one steel is mostly expensively used in industry it possesses the following advantages over the other metals one so steel one it is one of the widely we can used in industries the first one is it is a cheap and it can provide wide range of properties one so next one is it is properties can be improved by alloying or heat treatment one it properties how can we improve means so by using the heat treatment process after then we can improve the properties of the material one so next one is it possesses good miscibility and weldability it possesses good miscibility and weldability so however the major limitations of this steel are these are the uh, extremely some advantages of the so steel one so comes to here however the major limitations of this steel are do not retain the hardness and strength at a high temperature so do not retain hardness hardness we cannot retain one so strength at a high temperature so poor resistance to poor resistance to corrosion and uh, oxidation at a high temperature one at high temperature onwards we can see on some corrosion formation and uh, oxidization also so at a hardness increases and the ductility and toughness are decreases so when the hardness increases the ductility and toughness are decreases it is a cheaper properties and applications of the plain carbon and the alloy steel are discussed one so it is the introduction about the uh, pure iron one so it is the introduction of the metal one comes to see here another uh, another introduction about the iron carbon alloys iron carbon alloys are usually classified into two types one is iron second one is steel one is iron second one is steel one iron carbon alloys are generally classified into two one one is iron second one is steel in irons we have the two classifications one is rough iron second one is cast iron so comes to the steel one steel we have the two classifications one is plain carbon steel second one is alloy steel one comes to the first topic is irons so in irons one we have the rough iron and cast iron rough iron cast iron so rough iron is the purest form of iron and does not practically contain any carbon one rough iron is one of the purest iron it does not practically contain any iron carbon one so iron carbon one so that's why it is one of the very very important material so it consists of about 3% slag distributed in an iron matrix one so during hard rolling and shaping operations the slag particles are analogued and causes 
pronounced directional properties one so during so in the higher end one what we are doing during heart rolling and shaping operations the slag radicals are enlarged one so some example one pure iron so children of pure iron how the uh, pure iron how they are made the shape means some example one uh, so we have the children of all and furnaces so kolmi telis kadamma mana workshops road side padta untadu evante mana farmer mana farmers use chestu untaru kodavallu gaani so next one vachesi ఇది గడ్డ పలుగులు అంటారు పలుగు పలుగు షార్ప్నెస్ కానీ సో నెక్స్ట్ వన్ వచ్చేసి గొడ్డలి ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఏంటంటే ఐరన్స్ అమ్మ ఇవి దీస్ ఆర్ ద రఫ్ ఐరన్స్ దీస్ రఫ్ ఐరన్స్ ఏంటంటే సో మనం తీసుకొచ్చి ఫర్నెస్ హీట్ చేసి మనం ఏం చేస్తామంటే మనకి కావాల్సిన షేప్ లో దాన్ని షార్ప్ చేయడం కానీ దానికి మనకు కావాల్సిన షేప్ లో దాన్ని బెంచ్ చేయడం కానీ చేస్తూ ఉంటారు అనమాట దట్ ఈస్ దాంగ్ అలాంగేషన్ వన్ సో దట్ ఈస్ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఫర్ ది రఫ్ ఐరన్ రఫ్ ఐరన్ ఐరన్ ఇస్ సాఫ్ట్ and tough material this is one of the soft and tough material with good corrosion resistance it is one of the good rust, uh, corrosion resistance one and fake to one fake to strength also so it is easily forged and welded it is easily forged and welded forged and welded we can easily forge and weld also so any once the rough iron is broken easy to weld also so but it does not respond to the heat treatment but it does not respond to heat treatment why mean why because rough iron is one of the purest form one so that's why it is not respond for heat treatment process one so it is widely it is widely suitable for pi- uh, piping the pipe that handles pipe that handles and mild corrosion liquids so these are the practically suitable for piping piping purpose it is suitable one and uh, handles one and mild corrosive liquids also next one is comes to here cast iron it is a rough iron one cast iron cast iron is a, an iron carbon alloy containing more than 2 percent is carbon one so cast iron containing so iron carbon alloy containing more than 2 percent is up to we can use it in iron equilibrium diagram the carbon contain 2 to 6.67 percent is, is called as the cast iron one most commercial cast irons also contain a significant amount of silicon and small amount of other elements such as sulfur and magnesium so iron lo carbon e kaaku we can use the most one most another significant amount of silicon and small amount of other elements such as sulfur and magnesium we can use it in cast irons so see here there are cast cast there are cast to their finished shapes from the melt so they can cast it they finish it say from the melt so melt the in the ara mano kavalsina so they are cast casting so go to the casting process in casting process by using the casting process we make the parts for the cast iron by using the cast iron material how can we made the parts how can we made the parts means so we go to the casting process casting is one of the production process in casting one by using the cast iron material we can manufacture different types of shapes one so that is called as the the cast to their finished shapes from the melt one the details of the cast irons are discussed under the separate chapter one so there is the introduction about the so second unit one second unit is nothing but metals so what is the metal and different types of metals so see here plain carbon steel in this one in this topic one we will discuss about so first one is in this topic our previous topic we can complete about uh, cast iron and different types of cast iron one so iron mostly we are used iron is mostly one of the very important material we are using for construction tool we are using domestic purpose also we are using architect purpose also we are using the irons one so in iron we have the different types of calculations iron is generally classified into different types the first one is white cast iron gray cast iron normal cast iron modular cast iron or graphite cast iron so these are the four types of cast iron not only four we have the other types also but we are discuss mainly four types only so that is our previous class what is the white cast iron and properties and applications of cast iron one and what is the white cast and what is the gray cast iron what are the applications importance so of the gray cast iron next one is what is the malleable cast iron and what is the applications and properties of malleable cast iron and next one is nodular what is the nodular cast iron or graphite cast iron so what are the applications of the uh, nodular or graphite cast iron it is our yesterday class it is our previous class one so iron is uh, we, we have i we will discuss about some examples also where we can use iron more early so three industries we can use mainly for iron 
so um, first one is construction purpose machine should we can use the iron next one is bridges sir. so next one is arctic purpose also we can use the, these three ma major industries we can use it for iron more one so comes to our previous class that one so comes to here today class is cooling amma cooling purpose we are in this cast irons in this crack cast irons gray malleable white ductile cast iron so see here we have, we have the four types of cast iron gray malleable white ductile or nodular cast iron see here so in these four types of cast iron see cooling is we can go for quick cooling one so slow cooling one slow cooling quick cooling fast cooling or slow cooling one so what are the fast cooling one see here what are the fast cooling irons means first one is white cast iron so white cast iron carbon present at the cementite one cementite one hard and brittle very difficult to machine one month so this is a malleable iron also one of the heat treated one so graphite in uh, uh, graphite in form of the tough strong and shocks resistance so, so it is the fast cooling is best example we use white cast iron so next one is slow, slow cooling slow cooling is a one of the gray cast iron gray cast iron uh, carbon present at the flake graphite one soft easily machining one so it is a uh, is a nodular or a spheroidal cast iron one so this is the best example for the fast cooling and slow cooling one fast cooling example is white cast iron slow cooling is gray cast iron so next one is see here gray cast iron and nodular cast iron it is a, is a not only one but two ones you see here so fast cooling white cast iron malleable cast iron it is gray cast iron nodular cast iron so these are the cooling one, slow cooling example one fast cooling examples one so see here it is a microstructures about the different types of cast iron one the first one is gray cast iron in gray cast iron these are the examples these are the microstructures these are the example of the microstructure see here gray cast iron this is a perlite perlite this is a perlite structure you can see perlite structure this one this is a malleable one malleable cast iron you can see perlite cast iron ferrite cast iron it is a white cast iron so it is a ductile cast iron it is a microstructure about the perlite and ferrite one so it is our previous class one so what is the cast iron and different types of cast iron and its microstructure and what is the cooling what is the fast cooling fast cooling which irons uh, we can do so uh, slow cooling which irons we can do means uh, see here fast cooling white and malleable slow cooling is gray and nodular cast iron so it is our previous class when it comes to our today topic is alloy cast iron alloy cast iron alloying elements are added to the cast iron to give the desired qualities for especially applications so alloy element are added to the cast iron cast iron so some alloying elements so in iron one you can use it for carbon you can use and extra you can add the alloying elements so alloying elements you can add the cast iron one give the desired qualities for some applications also some application process it give some desired qualities one so the common alloying element are common alloying elements so in this one alloying elements what are the alloying elements are see here nickel chromium molybdenum and copper cast iron these are the uh, these are the alloying elements nickel chromium molybdenum and copper one these are the common alloying elements so next one is cast iron consist of these elements is called as the alloy cast iron the cast iron consisting these elements so that's why we can call as it is a alloy cast iron so next one is see here alloy cast iron process high carb high corrosion and high high heat resistance one alloy cast iron process high corrosion one and heat resistance one so it causes one they also causes shocks resistance combined with wear and uh, abrasion resistance one so next one is the specific effort of alloying elements are briefly discussed discussed below so we can discuss about these are the alloying elements so the first one is nickel chromium molybdenum next one is copper so first one is nickel so you can use it in nickel and nickel is see here nickel arsenide stabilizer and graphitizer this one so increase the hardness we can use it for nickel in a cast iron we can use for nickel one so it increase the hardenability and impact strength and the low, <coughs> lower the melting point of the cast iron one so in cast iron we can use the nickel one so what is the benefits means it increase the hardenability so second one is impact strength and the lower the melting point of the cast iron that is the main use about the nickel nickel we are using in cast iron these are the benefits one some example one chromium you can use it for chromium see here 
so increase the hardenability so when you use the chromium it is also increased upon hardenability tension strength and hardness also so and high chromium contained so less than 12% uh, chromium one so impact wear one corrosion and oxidization resistance one so these are the chromium these are the chromium you can use it for cast iron one so next one is molybdenum one so carbide former so it is increase the dendrite strength and the hardness and the imparts resistance to corrosion at elevated temperature one so the corrosion at elevated temperature one so these are the molybdenum uses one next one is copper or it is graphite one it is generally added in combination with other alloying element so copper we can add add in combination with the other alloying elements it increase the strength hardness and resistance to atmospheric corrosion one so it is the main use about the copper one why why these type of elements we can use it for cast iron means these are the benefits by these benefits onwards these alloying elements we are using in cast iron after the only so we are getting this type of properties in the that the cast iron material one so next one is properties and applications of alloy cast iron are see here alloy cast iron are generally known as their known by their trade names compositions and properties and applications of these cast iron are discussed below one so see here see here different types of these are the different types of alloy elements so different types of alloy elements alloy cast iron or alloy alloy cast iron these are the different types of alloy cast iron so what are the alloy cast iron means nickel hard nickel resist silver so na uh, nickel silver so these are the four types of alloy cast iron alloy cast iron the first one is and uh, hard nickel hard one nickel resist one so lal so nickel silal so these are the four one so first one is in composition nickel hard one you can use the some composition what are the compositions means these are the elements so these are the elements alloy elements we are using iron one so in a nickel hard one we are using the these elements so copper we are using 3 percentage one silicon 0.1 nickel one 3 to 5 percent chromium one to 3 percentage one so we can use the these elements one so what are the properties we are getting means here high hardness but poor impact and fragility strength these properties are improved by increasing nickel and chromium content one so the these properties are improved by increasing nickel and chromium content you can increase nickel and chromium content one automatically we can get this type of properties high hardness but poor impact and fragility strength we can get so next one is what are the applications mean fast uh, requiring parts requiring high wear and abrasion resistance in chemical processing units these are the applications we can use it in any uh, nickel hard one we are using these are the applications we are using this type of applications one so ni resistance ni resist so copper we can use 2.2 or 8 percentage one 2.8 sorry it is not for dot one 2.81 one. silicon 1.5 percentage one nickel 14 to 36 percentage one chromium we can use 1 to 5 percent is what are the properties we can get these alloy these alloy elements we are used in nickel resistance one in the nickel resistance one what are the properties means high corrosion and heat resistance we can get these are the properties parts requiring high corrosion one high corrosion heat and erosion resistance used for generating of motor covers pump bodies and impellers extrude uh, manifold furnaces furnaces parts and cylinder lines these are the applications these the, in these applications we are used material is ni resist ni resist material used for this type of applications this type of manufacturing process one so what are the manufacturing process in cover, motor covers pump bodies pillars uh, exhaust manifold so furnace parts and cylindrical lines so these parts onwards these parts manufacturing purpose we can use it for this material and night resist one so next one is sil see lal so we can use the carbon content copper uh, is 2 percentage one silicon is 5 to 7 percentage one copper we can use silicon we can use nickel we cannot use chromium we cannot use so what are the properties here high oxidation resistance but it is it is a brittle one so high oxidation resistance one you can get so but it is a brittle 
but it is a brittle one but high oxidation resistance we can get in this silal one but simultaneously it is a brittle material brittle material means it is easy to break the material so next one is parts not subjected to the impact loads so parts not subjected to the impact loads one so it is a applications one next one is a micro silal silal micro and i c r o s i l a micro silal so copper we can use here. so so in this one we can use it for see here copper 2 percentage one silicon 5 to 6 percent one nickel and chromium we can use it in uh, this 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 percentage one 2 to 4 one so upward to silicon 5 to 6 nickel, uh, nickel 18 to 22 chromium 2 to 4 percentage one so it is a high oxidation it is a high toughness and strength one so in this one we can get properties is high toughness and strength we can get so where we can use it, this type of materials means uh, gas type and parts Re, uh, retorts and aluminium melting crucibles one so in this uh, manufacturing purpose uh, so in this parts manufacturing purpose you can use this material micro cellar so these are the alloy cast iron alloy cast iron alloy cast iron uh, alloy elements are added to the cast iron give the desired qualities and special applications one so the common alloying elements are nickel first one is nickel chromium nickel chromium malvadium and copper cast iron consisting these elements so that's we can call as the alloy cast iron so these elements are consisting in iron so that's why we can call as it is alloy cast iron so it is a it is one of the topic next one is uh, next our topic is introduction about the so our previous introduction one so introduction about the this one so pure iron one so pure iron widely we are using for industries alloys and uh, pure iron is relatively soft and metal and not widely used in industrial applications alloy process wide range of properties and why wide, widely used in industries is broadly classified into ferrous non ferrous so uh, previous one we have discussed this one so next one is iron iron also we have discussed a uh, few minutes back so it is iron we are generally two types one rough iron cast iron so alloy cast iron also so rough iron is this one there is no classification about the rough iron one cast iron we have the classifications uh, our previous class we will discuss about cast iron applications of the cast iron and properties of the cast iron so next one is uh, today our another topic is alloy cast iron and uh, another topic is steels so we can discuss about today plain carbon steel and alloy steels what is a plain carbon steel and alloy steel one so see here plain carbon steel iron carbon alloy containing up to two percent is carbon is called as the plain carbon steel or we can call as or we can call as straight straight carbon steels straight carbon steels in iron equilibrium diagram the carbon content we can use zero to two percentage is called as the plain carbon steel or steel one so in practical in practically the range of the carbon content in the steel is about 0.08 to 1.5% in practically the range of carbon content in steel is about practically the carbon content we are using in steels means 0.08 to 1.5% we are used in the steels one so in carbon steel the carbon is the main element used to control their properties one so in carbon steels why because we are uh, why we are calling carbon steel means in steel one we are using the carbon one so that's why we are calling as carbon steel carbon steel the carbon is the main element so the main element used to control the properties the total properties the carbon will be controlled one so that's why we can call as it is a carbon steel one in addition to carbon they contain the following elements so see here so in uh, in addition in addition to carbon one the carbon to part we are using the addition another containing following elements also we are using one so not only steel plus carbon plus other elements also we are adding one after then we are going to the manufacturing one so manufacturing lo steel lo man vachese enten andamma steel e kaakunda carbon use chestunna carbon to part extra elements kodu use chestunna extra elements add chestunna ante chudandi amma manganese use chestunna silicon sulfur phosphorus ఇవన్నీ కూడా మన దేంట్లో యూజ్ చేసుకుంటున్నాం అంటే స్టీల్ లో యూజ్ చేసుకుంటున్నాం సో ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ మ్యాంగనీస్ సో మ్యాంగనీస్ వీఆర్ యూజింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ స్టీల్ వన్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద బెనిఫిట్స్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద యూజ్ అబౌట్ ది మ్యాంగనీస్ మీన్స్ సీ హియర్ మ్యాంగనీస్ ఎన్ షూడ్ దట్ 
sound casting free from blow holes so manganese ensures sound casting so so free from blow holes one that is the main benefit one it combines with the sulfur it is the manganese combined with sulfur to reduce its harmful effects so when manganese combined with sulfur so after then what happen means it reduces the harmful effects efforts it will be reducing one it rises the strength and toughness of the steel one it rises the strength and toughness of the steel one however it increases the tendency of the steel to crack and destroy when pinched a hardness one so manganese one see here however it is increase the tendency of the steel one so it increase in tendency of the steel one to crack and destroy when pinched a hardened one so that is one of the benefits for the manganese one. manganese we are used in plain carbon steel these are the benefits one so next one is see here silicon so what is the silicon uh, using in plain carbon steel means the silicon contained is limited to 0.3 percent base it acts as a deoxidizer one the formation of blow blow holes blow holes in casting one the smaller amount of silicon and little uh, little uh, upon the mechanical properties one but increase in its content can causes breakdown of the cementite reducing the strength one so these are the major uses about the silicon silicon content how much we are using means 0.3 percentage it acts as a by using 30.3 percentage one it acts as a deoxidizer one in the form of the blow in the formation of the blow holes in the casting one the small amount of silicon as a little upon mechanical properties one the small amount it is affecting on some mechanical properties one but increased but increases in its content can causes so by uh, by using the silicon content one what happen means can causes breakdown of the cementite reducing the strength one so breakdown of this cementite and reducing the strength one by using the more silicon content in the carbon steel one so that is the one of the drawback one so sulfur one sulfur content in steel limited to 0.05 percentage one reduced to its harmful effects so sulfur we are using 0.05 percentage one so it is reducing the some harmful effects also so sulfur and uh, manganese uh, sulfur and c here magnesium manganese sorry manganese and sulfur are one of the um, it is uh, one of the important important one important element by using the these two elements so it is reduce the harmful effects one so it combine with iron to form the iron sulfide so it combine with iron to form iron sulfide which is greatly reduce the strength one which is, which is greatly reduce its strength sulfur sometimes added to 0.2 percentage one to improve the machinability of the steel one some example one sulfur we can use it for 0.2 percentage after then what happen means it improve the machinability of the steel one so that is the major point here so actually generally we are used for sulfur how much means 0.0 percentage only so you can use 0.0 percentage one to so it is reduce the harmful effects one so we can increase the car uh, we can use for 0.2 percentage one so improve the machinability of the steel one so it is the sulfur uses one next one is phosphorus what is phosphorus so phosphorus combined with iron to form to form iron phosphide so that makes the steel and steel hard and brittle one so some example one phosphorus combined with iron to form it iron phosphide that makes the steel hard so to increase the steel hardness one and brittleness also brittleness and hardness increasing purpose the phosphorus the phosphorus uh, is the uh, play for key role one in uh, steel one the presence of the phosphorus in steels lead to develop surface cracks the presence of sulfur in steels one leads to develop surface cracks one during cold working one so in phosphorus in steel leads to develop only what we what it is develop means surface cracks it is developing during the cold working process in cold working process so the surface cracks are developed one in presence of the phosphorus so it is the phosphorus uh, one of the element uh, uh, it is a main role it, it play the some key role about the so steel one so next one you see here alloy steels so we have the plain carbon steel and alloy steel generally so in steel one we have the two classifications one is plain carbon steel one and alloy steel one and plain carbon steel we have the some classifications also alloy steel also we have the some classifications 
So first one we can go for introduction about the plain carbon steel. This one. Next one is the alloy steel introduction one. So alloy of iron and carbon containing other and intentionally adding other element are known as alloy one. So alloy of iron and carbon and containing the containing the other element containing the other element one are known as the alloy one. So alloy steel one are known as the alloy steel one. So in this alloy steel one. Iron and carbon containing other intentionally added another metal one are known as the alloy element. So in alloy steel, significant amount of elements such as nickel, chromium, vanadium, extra one add, are, are added to obtain the desired properties in the steel one. So iron plus carbon plus we can use the, this type of alloy elements. So after then you know, it getting the desired properties in the steel one by using the this uh, uh, carbon iron and carbon and we are using some alloy elements after then steel getting the desired properties in the steel one. So that is a basic, uh, the, uh, this is the introduction about the alloy steel one. This is the introduction about the alloy steel one. So see here it is a today class one. So today class is nothing but so introduction about the plain carbon steel and alloy steel. What is the plain carbon steel? So what are the alloy elements in plain carbon steel and what are the alloy steel? What is defined uh, alloy steel and uh, what are the alloy elements in alloy steel? So what is the rough iron and the rough iron and what is the cast iron or different types of cast iron? We will discuss about previous class. So thank you, Amma. This is a today class one. So tomorrow next class. So tomorrow class we will discuss about classifications of plain carbon steel. So we have the different types of plain carbon steel one. So the classifications we will discuss about next class one. Thank you.